Our final speaker for the night is a multi-passionate, self-employed designer of 28 years. She was the brand designer behind the Gone Decked Mayoral campaign and is using her skills to build mylifeplanners.ca. Give a warm welcome to Crystal Reynolds. Okay, I don't know how anyone comes after that, so. I'll give it a try. Okay. Raise your hands if you love puzzles. Hello to my people. Okay, and raise your hands if you think it's possible to have too many. <laughs> I love them. There's something about sitting at a table, feeling your brain tickle with anticipation to discover the similar colored pieces and getting lost in discovering random connections. In my early years, I completed a puzzle, felt like a precious artwork to me, so much so I'd let it sit out for days. But about hundreds of puzzles later, once I snap in that last piece, instead of feeling sad that it's over, I'm excited to pack it up so I can open up a new one. But when I choose one to spend my precious time with, I don't choose one larger than a thousand pieces. I do this because I'm very aware of how I can get obsessed. Project book, video, binge a series. So kind of like a bag of mini eggs, you know you'll never feel satisfied until the bag's empty, so it's probably smarter to buy a smaller bag. I'm also a believer in enjoying my life experience. So see that puzzle with the pencils? I don't pick that. <laughs> I prefer distinct sections of color and pattern like those buckets of organized Lego pieces. The simpler it is, the easier it is for me to finish and pack it up, except when there's a missing piece. The feeling of joy of, is stolen from me to snap back in that last piece into place, and I can't move on to the next one I feel cheated out of that closure. Closure. The word brings up feelings about emotions, relationships that end with no reason defined. I have fond memories of the friendships I created in my school years. There was something about knowing time together was finite, joining a team, coming together for a cause that always has an end point. The feeling of closure is clear you get when the season is over, this one was a season of basketball ending with a city win as a celebration. And then after what seems like a mini lifetime, the connections made with colleagues at work, then I moved jobs. I created what I thought were forever friends, but in fact, they were my work friends. So once I left the job, I realized what sustained those connections was the fact that we'd seen each other almost every day. I had to learn to start to let go of community so I could open up myself for new ones. It's simply not realistic to befriend every person you meet, and it can be a challenge to know when a new friend is a forever friend or a for now one. I've learned that once a relationship no longer serves me, it's actually okay to let it go. I came across this meme and realized that it aligned with a lesson I wish I'd known earlier in life, that it was in fact, I was in fact my own best friend and putting my needs first is okay. This applies not just to me, but everyone. So instead of feeling abandoned when a friend goes MIA, I respect that they obviously have their own shit to deal with, so I'll just focus on mine. Nothing lasts forever except my love for you. This is a mantra I created to tell my kids to soften the emotional loss to impermanent things like balloons. I wanted them to realize that life is filled with little and big losses. Something as basic as an expectation that a product is a lifetime investment. I know nothing lasts forever, but a KitchenAid dough hook? <laughs> Who would have thought that my years of sourdough, challah bread, and dinner buns would break what seemed a forever construction? So I opted for a better replacement. Being a parent is an opportunity to see your kids transform in the blink of an eye, or in this case, the buzz of the razor. When my 13-year-old daughter announced she wanted to shave her head at her school's Terry Fox assembly, I had to push back my own love of long hair. And after it done, I love seeing her face filled with utter joy, and I think I saw my daughter for the first real time. Just like the ocean washing away footsteps we make on the beach, whatever we create in our lives will eventually be washed away by time. There's a sense of adventure in the impermanence of life, understanding that endings can be a good thing because they allow for something new to begin. 
such as when a career ends. My dad had been a city transit bus driver since I was born. I remember going to work with him when I was young and loved the beginning and end of the shift when I get the bus all to myself, running up and down that aisle. <laughs> when he retired, my family and I joined him as he drove to his last stop, celebrating his career and being excited for the next chapter. This is a photo of my dad and his siblings at my Baba's funeral in Dauphin, Manitoba. They're lined up from oldest on the left to my dad as the youngest at the end. Looking back, it's insane to see this image of smiling faces and knowing all but two have passed on. Closing the chapter of a loved one's life brings people together. And my best memories are these services, is sharing the memories and laughter. When my Baba passed away, I remember sitting in the church, sharing stories with my cousin Susie and laughing out loud. It was wonderful, even if the older locals sitting on the other side were like giving us the stink eye. Every summer of my first 15 years of life was spent visiting family who lived in Dauphin, and over 35 years later with no more family living there to visit, I don't imagine traveling back anytime soon. Because what drew me there wasn't the cool painted fire hydrants, but the people who were family now passed on. Maybe that's why I still haven't opened this letter from my Auntie Sandy who passed on two years ago. There's something about knowing that this is the last time I'll ever hear from her, and then I get to choose this last precious moment to me. I think I just want to hold on to this opportunity for one more conversation. I love a good metaphor, and I like to think each act of closure is like snapping a puzzle piece into place, into the landscape of our lives. And even if at the end, and you look back to see some pieces missing, those relationships that never resolved, it is possible to be okay with it and let it go, pack it up so you can start something new. So with that, every ending is an opportunity to start to fit, <laughs> opportunity to start fresh. So why not try something new like my podcast, Plan for Wonder. <laughs> I share snackable sized weekly conversations with myself and sometimes others about finding focus, bringing clarity, living with intention, and also planning for wonder in our lives.